Got a lot of exciting stuff happening on the farm today. Doing a lot of work in the nursery. I've got some citrus that I'm, I'm gonna pot up. We're doing a ton of more stuff on the paper pot transplanter. And later on, I'm gonna tell you about the dumbest mistake I've made in a long time. Stay tuned. sitting in our hothouse and our crops are coming along very well going into winter. We've got, this is mostly planted with Salanova lettuce. We've got a, another bed of arugula that's on its second or third cut over there and then a bed of turnips. And what you see in these pots behind me is basil. And this is going to be part of a vertical grow wall that is going to take most of the entire wall of this greenhouse. So that's the northern side facing the south which is here and we needed to get the basil in these pots because it, it's been sitting in the plugs a little too long and so right now the guys are putting it into what the pots that are eventually going to mount on the wall. So we've still got to frame this in but at the moment we're just getting the basil out of the plugs and into what these grow pots are. Now if you guys have followed my vlogs over particularly last winter going into this spring you would have seen me talk about this grow wall and we had it in the nursery we're actually taking it down and combining it with what this company called vicinity has sent to us and we're going to mount it up here and so this is this is how this thing works it's a really brilliant system there is a a pot which is this this plastic mount that essentially it has these hooks on the back and it mounts to these aluminum tracks that are one meter long or three feet and they mount like this and they they stack together like this and uh, that's essentially how it works there's a there's a bag in it that holds the soil and it's sort of a felt type material and the irrigation drips through this little hole on the top and it's kind of neat because what happens is the water goes around the bag and so it sort of evenly distributes it in the, the pot and so each of these little pots get an equal amount of water, at least from what I've seen. And so I, I, so far I'm very impressed by this product. Um, we're going to you know, really put it to the test and scale it up and put it on the wall of this greenhouse. You know, we've got some, some engineering concerns here. Um, we're hoping that the weight isn't too much. What we've calculated is that, I'll show you over here. So we're going to be uh, putting, bolting in to our steel mounts here, two 2x4s two running along and then we're going to have these aluminum tracks running down this way with the pots attached to it. So we've calculated that with soil and water on, like, and having that soil watered, there's going to be almost 300 pounds of weight on each post. So it's a little concerning that it might be too much on this greenhouse. These posts are concreted into the ground. So I'm hoping that it's okay. We're going to mount up part of it first and just kind of leave it for a couple days and see how it does and just kind of monitor it. Um, you know, the steel's strong, it's very thick steel. This greenhouse has been, it's the second season on this greenhouse, has been doing great. So I'm hoping that we'll actually be able to hold the weight of this, of all these pots. If it isn't, we're gonna have to figure something else out on how to mount it. So right now these guys are using soil from, that we've had in pots that has grown tomatoes and basil. It's a bunch of compost. We've put some Gaia Green fertilizer in it. And then they're filling the pots here with soil and planting basil into the pots. So we're doing a bunch of nursery work in here right now. The guys are planting a bunch of spinach in paper pots. So we're gonna do some experimenting this year of seeing how far we can push late crops in the ground. So we're 
starting spinach in paper chains right now. So these are two inch paper chains and we're using the six mil plate, which is dumping about three or four seeds per cell, which is perfect because I like a thick stand when I seed spinach in the ground. And so I think this is gonna be as close as I can possibly get to what it would be with direct seeding. So obviously the advantage to doing this now in the nursery is that I can leave it in here for the next two weeks, get a good amount of foliage on there and then put it out into the ground under the caterpillar tunnels. So these are gonna go into beds that aren't even prepped yet. We're pushing the arugula in those beds as far as we can. We're gonna get one more cut from some of these beds and then we'll pull it out, turn those beds over and then put these paper pot transplanters of spinach in there. And so it's just a, you know, seeing how much more extra production we can get in the season by, by employing that technique. Because to do that by hand, would, wouldn't really be worth it in my opinion to, to um, seed that densely a greens crop like spinach would take a lot of labor and it's just something that's never been considered but now at the paper pot transplanter we can do that. This is the first succession so when we do spinach at five rows we actually need six flats of paper, chain, of paper pots for one bed so that's one 50 foot bed is six flats. Right now we've got available nursery space so we can afford the use of the real estate and these won't sit here that long but so this is going to be the next next succession that are going to replace some of the arugula beds that we have under caterpillar tunnels right now and right now i'm planting some new citrus trees these were sent to me by david at greenscape gardens in toronto i actually thought he was when he originally contacted me i thought he was from california because he was talking about citrus but no he's in ontario and apparently these are some cold hardy citrus varieties. Super excited about this is a finger lime. And it I've had this before. It, it, it's it's almost shaped like a like a an okra, a piece of okra. And you squeeze it and it looks like caviar that comes out. It's it's a clear, transparent, looks like caviar, but it tastes like lime. And so that's that's a finger lime. So I'm just potting these up. He mailed these to me in boxes. I mentioned this in the vlog a couple weeks ago, just kind of getting around to planting these now. And I'm gonna be putting them into some bigger pots. So just potting these guys up and uh, we'll see how they do. So this pot is just filled with normal soil actually from my farm. Mixed with some compost and some 444 Gaia Green. Pixie dust as we call it here. Putting that in the hole. And then I'll just plant my rootstock in there. This is my tree, my old tree planting shovel. That's a New Zealand lemonade. Apparently all of these are very cold hardy. So, I mean, I'm not gonna put them outside. I'm gonna keep them in here over the winter, but it's kind of neat to know that there's more cold tolerant citrus varieties that worth experimenting with in Canada. This one's a page mandarin. So that's a, I guess that's a type of orange, a mandarin orange. This last one is called gold nugget. I'm assuming that's another orange as well. So I've got a finger lime, a New Zealand lemonade, page mandarin orange, and then our gold nugget. Actually, maybe it's a lemon too. Could be gold. Is gold yellow or orange? I don't know. This is just some leftover potting soil I'm just gonna finish with on the surface. We made such a stupid mistake. It was totally my fault. And when we put these up in the spring, we had the tunnels stretched out to cover five beds. Now they're covering four. Reason being for I'm covering four now opposed to five is that I'm going into winter and we're gonna have snow. And when these are stretched out to five, the ends come in pretty sharp and it's, you know, it's, 
really uncomfortable to harvest on the end beds. So that won't handle snowpack very well. There's more surface area. So when we have them at four beds, especially with our narrow walkways, we only have 10 inch walkways. There's, it's, it's quite a, a sharp angle. It looks from where you're looking right now, you're, you're looking at the bent or the angled post on the end. So it looks like it's not a, a sharp slope, but it is. And um, anyways, the really stupid mistake I made is I cut the poly when I had these covering five beds. So now we've put them to four, the, 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 the bows of the greenhouse are higher off the ground and now the poly is short. So we stretched the poly out here and put it up and we're like, oh, we're about four or five feet short from having that poly reach the ground. So really, really dumb rookie mistake on my part. But the, hey, these are mistakes you make and I'm sharing this with you guys so that you don't make the same mistake. So what we're gonna do to fix this problem is the fortunate thing is that we've got channel lock on all of these ends. And what we can do is take some scrap poly, which we have a lot of, and put it down, we'll, we'll take a piece, we'll take a piece of poly, put it here, and then take the other poly from the greenhouse over top of it, and then channel lock them together. So they'll be overlaying each other, channel locked like this, and then the, the poly that's coming from the greenhouse will overlap the one that's, that's on the end, so the water will run off it this way. I'm pretty sure that'll work as a fix, but yeah, really, really rookie mistake. Another thing I want to want to say is, so going into winter, we're looking really good. We've got packed out production on all of these beds, and this is the same for all of our greenhouses. And I said this earlier today with our spinach that we're doing in, paper, in the paper pot transplanter. I, my my hypothesis is that with combination of good season extension techniques, planting the right crops in the ground at the right time, and using the paper pot transplanter, I think I can get one to two more crops per bed per season. So right now on average, in our high rotation areas, we get four, be four crops per bed per season. So that's all quick growing crops, right? That longest season crop in there would be carrots, but I only do them in the summer and they end up being a 60 day crop. So we're getting four, bed, four crops per bed per season. I think with the paper pot transplanter at the beginning and the end of the season, I can get another two crops by this way, or one to two by doing this. So we're gonna harvest this bed of carrots here, for example, very shortly, you know, within the next two weeks or so. We start some more spinach in the paper pot transplanter now, get that spinach up, almost emerged like what these new beds that are coming up here look like and then get that in the ground. So then I'm not gonna see that this winter, but I will see it early next spring. I'll have that spinach. I'll be harvesting that spinach by probably early March. And then I can go paper pot transplanter another crop in there, like say arugula, and then get that going really quickly. You know, the neat thing about the paper pot transplanter that I've seen this season is that you can transplant crops that you normally wouldn't transplant. Like, sure, you could technically go and hand transplant densely planted greens like arugula, but so much labor input and time is gonna go into that that it really becomes a negative cost-benefit analysis. So with the paper pot, we can now consider that because even still, so these spinach beds, for example, five rows on a 30-inch bed, we use six paper chains to do that. So those paper chains cost about three bucks a piece. So that's $18 in paper chains to do a 50-foot bed of spinach. That bit of spinach will be cut, let's say at the very least twice. So we'll get about 100 pounds of spinach off that bed. So even if you're selling that at a really low price, like four to six dollars a pound, you're still getting you know, 400 to 600 dollars a crop at 18 dollars of material cost for that crop. It's very negligible. So it'll be really interesting to see how much further we can push our season by using the paper pot transplanter to transplant crops that we never would have before with a lot of good season extension like caterpillar tunnels. So I'll probably leave this for the guys to take care of. I'm gonna be packing my bags and heading down to Rose Creek Farms in Selmer, Tennessee. We've got a sold out workshop. It's gonna be super exciting. I'm stoked because the weather is still balmy summer weather down there. So it'll be nice to get out of these chills and a little blast of summer before we wrap up the season. So that's it for today, guys. We'll talk to you later.